Welcome to Saving Castles, the podcast for castle and chateau enthusiasts. Join us as we explore the fascinating history, stories and culture of these awe-inspiring structures, from the legends and folklore to the latest in restoration. We'll cover it all, so whether you're a seasoned castle aficionado or just discovering the magic of these magnificent buildings, this is the podcast for you. So grab your headphones and let's dive in. Godfrey of Bouillon was born into a world of power struggles and complex alliances, the young scion of a noble house with roots deep in the fertile soil of medieval Europe. His birthplace, the Duchy of Lower Lorraine, was a realm seething with tension, a battleground of ambitions where only the strongest or the most cunning could thrive. It was within this dynamic, ever-changing environment that Godfrey would begin his extraordinary journey. Born in 1060 to Count Eustace of Boulogne and Ida of Lorraine, Godfrey was the second of three brothers. The blood of Charlemagne coursed through their veins, a testament to their illustrious lineage. However, as the sons of a count and countess, they were not born into the loftiest echelons of nobility. They were distanced from the crown, yet close enough to feel its weight and understand its value. Godfrey's early life was shaped by the chivalric ethos of the time. He was trained in the art of warfare and the code of chivalry from a tender age. The life of a knight-to-be was rigorous, beginning with serving as a page and then advancing to the role of a squire. Alongside physical training, Godfrey would have been schooled in literature, religion, and courtly etiquette. It was within these early years that the young Godfrey began to cultivate the skills and character that would eventually define his life. In the societal structure of the Middle Ages, second sons like Godfrey often faced uncertain futures. They were not the primary heirs, yet they were too high-born to live ordinary lives. Godfrey, however, was granted the Duchy of Lower Lorraine in 1087 by the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV, setting him on the path towards his remarkable destiny. Lower Lorraine was an influential region within the Holy Roman Empire, straddling what is now Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg and parts of Germany. Rich in resources and strategically located, it was a coveted prize. Yet Godfrey's ascent was not an easy one. The duchy was a patchwork of feuding nobles, rife with internal strife, and Godfrey was an outsider. In this crucible of conflict, the young duke would have to prove his mettle. Godfrey's early rule was marked by both challenges and successes. Though initially distrusted due to his foreign birth, he soon won over many of his subjects with his leadership skills, his commitment to justice, and his embodiment of the knightly virtues. Godfrey faced down rebellions, negotiated with rival nobles, and defended his duchy with determination and skill. His experiences in Lower Lorraine would harden him, preparing him for the trials he would face in the Holy Land. Godfrey's faith was a beacon in his life, guiding his decisions and his actions. As a devout Catholic, in an era when the Church's power was near absolute, his faith was more than just personal belief. It was intertwined with his political life. Godfrey was deeply invested in the church, donating generously and even founding an abbey in his duchy. His piety, coupled with his valour, would mark him as an ideal candidate for a holy mission that was rapidly gathering momentum on the horizon. In these formative years, Godfrey was moulded by the unique pressures of his time and his station. From the turbulent duchy of Lower Lorraine, he would emerge as a paragon of medieval knighthood. Yet it was not the lands of Europe, but the deserts of the East that would be the stage for his greatest triumphs and trials. The call of the First Crusade would soon echo in his ears, summoning him to a destiny that would inscribe his name in the annals of history forever. When Godfrey of Bouillon reached adolescence, the time had come to mould the boy into the night. The Middle Ages was a time when power lay at the tip of a sword. The art of warfare was not just about physical prowess, but also about strategic thinking, diplomacy, and a keen understanding of the human psyche. And for a young noble like Godfrey, 
the stakes were even higher. As a second son, Godfrey had to carve his own path in a society that revered the firstborn. There was no grand inheritance waiting for him, no ready-made future. Instead, there was a challenging world that required strength, wit, and resilience. The perfect training ground for a knight. Godfrey's education began within the castle walls of Boulogne. From a tender age, he was immersed in the principles of chivalry, the warrior's code that governed a knight's conduct both on and off the battlefield. He was taught the skills of horsemanship, the art of combat, and the strategies of warfare. But alongside these martial teachings, he was also introduced to the subtler aspects of courtly life. For a knight was not just a warrior, but also a gentleman, a diplomat, a man of faith. Godfrey was expected to learn the arts, literature, and music. He was schooled in the nuances of diplomacy, the value of alliances, and the importance of honor. And through all this, the church played a prominent role. Godfrey, like many of his contemporaries, was deeply religious, and his faith was an integral part of his identity as a knight. As Godfrey grew older, he proved himself to be an exceptional student. He displayed remarkable skills in both the arts of war and peace, combining physical prowess with intellectual acumen. He quickly gained the respect and admiration of his peers and superiors, marking himself as a young man destined for greatness. In 1087, Godfrey's life took a significant turn. The Holy Roman Emperor Henry, in a strategic move, granted him the Duchy of Lower Lorraine. Godfrey was no longer just a knight, but a duke, a ruler responsible for the lives and welfare of his subjects. It was a formidable task, but one that Godfrey took up with vigor and determination. As a ruler, Godfrey demonstrated remarkable qualities of leadership. He was just and fair, valiant in battle, and wise in diplomacy. He managed to maintain a delicate balance of power, successfully navigating through the complex political landscape of the time. His rule was marked by stability and prosperity, and he gained the respect and loyalty of his subjects. Yet, Godfrey's rule in Lower Lorraine was also a time of great challenges. He faced rebellion, political intrigue, and the ever-present threat of war, but through all these trials Godfrey remained steadfast. He stood his ground, defended his duchy, and emerged as a formidable leader. By the time the call of the First Crusade echoed across Europe, Godfrey was not just a knight, but a duke, a warrior, a leader, and a man of deep faith. He had faced the trials of knighthood and rulership, and had emerged stronger and wiser. His character had been tested, his mettle proven, and now he was ready for the greatest test of his life, a journey that would take him far from the familiar landscapes of Lower Lorraine into the heart of the Holy Land. In the year 1087, Godfrey of Bouillon found himself in possession of a new title, the Duke of Lower Lorraine, granted to him by the Holy Roman Emperor Henry IV. It was a role of immense responsibility and substantial challenges. Now, the knight from Boulogne was a leader of men, a shepherd of souls, and a protector of lands. Godfrey was prepared to face these challenges head-on, his prior training and experiences bolstering him for the trials ahead. Lower Lorraine was a domain of crucial strategic importance, nestled at the crossroads of several powerful European entities. A region blessed with rich soil and bountiful resources, it was a prize that many eyes coveted. As Duke, Godfrey was tasked with maintaining the prosperity of this land, ensuring its defense against external threats. But his challenges were not just from without, they came from within as well. The duchy was not a homogeneous entity. It was a mosaic of people, cultures, and allegiances, a tapestry woven with the threads of various noble families, each with their own agendas and aspirations. In this cauldron of complex politics, Godfrey had to navigate with skill and tact. His rule required not just martial prowess, but also the subtle art of diplomacy. 
Godfrey's early years as duke were fraught with rebellion and unrest. Rival nobles, restless under the rule of this newcomer, sought to challenge his authority, but Godfrey, the trained knight, was ready for these challenges. He was no stranger to conflicts, whether it was on the battlefield or the corridors of power. With strength and astuteness, he quelled the rebellions, consolidated his rule, and earned the respect of his subjects. In Godfrey's rule, his subjects saw a unique combination of stern authority and benevolent leadership. He was a strong ruler, enforcing his will when necessary, yet he was also fair and just listening to the grievances of his people, ensuring their welfare and upholding the principles of justice. It was a rare balance, one that made him an admired figure in Lower Lorraine. But Godfrey's leadership was not confined to the administrative realm alone. When external threats loomed, he was at the forefront, leading his troops with bravery and skill. As a warrior duke, he was a formidable force on the battlefield, his exploits earning him renown far beyond the borders of his duchy. Religion played a pivotal role in Godfrey's rule. A devout Catholic, he sought to embody the principles of his faith in his leadership. He was generous in his patronage of the church, funding religious institutions and supporting the clergy. His faith was not just a personal belief. It was a guiding principle that shaped his rule. As years passed, Godfrey's rule in Lower Lorraine was marked by stability and prosperity. Through his leadership, he had transformed a fractious duchy into a unified domain, one that stood strong amidst the turbulent currents of medieval Europe. As we delve deeper into Godfrey's life, we see the making of the man who would later be a key figure in the First Crusade. His rule in Lower Lorraine was a crucible that tested and honed him. The trials he faced, the victories he achieved, and the losses he suffered, all were threads woven into the tapestry of his character. The late 11th century was a period of unprecedented spiritual fervor in Christendom. The Holy Land, the cradle of Christianity, was under the control of Muslim forces. The Church yearned for its liberation, a desire that was shared by many of its faithful. In 1095, when Pope Urban made a passionate appeal at the Council of Clermont for a holy war to reclaim Jerusalem, the response was overwhelming. Nobles and peasants alike were stirred by his words, moved to commit themselves to what came to be known as the First Crusade. Among those who heard this call was Godfrey of Bouillon. Godfrey was already an accomplished warrior and a respected ruler when the call of the Crusade reached him. He was known for his piety, his bravery, and his skill in battle. It was only natural, then, that he would be drawn to the holy cause. Yet, the decision to join the crusade was far from simple. The crusade represented a significant commitment. Those who pledged themselves to the cause were expected to abandon their homes and their families to journey across unfamiliar lands, fraught with danger, and to face an uncertain future. It was a perilous venture, one that required not just physical strength, but also spiritual resolve. For Godfrey, the call to crusade was not merely a martial enterprise. It was a divine mission. His deep faith made him believe that he was chosen to undertake this sacred task. The prospect of fighting for his faith, of liberating the land where Jesus Christ had lived and died, resonated with him. Yet he understood the complexities involved. As Duke of Lower Lorraine, Godfrey had responsibilities towards his people. His departure would leave the duchy vulnerable, a prospect that could not have been easy for him to accept. Moreover, the financial demands of the crusade were enormous. As a result, he made a dramatic decision. He sold or mortgaged much of his property to fund his crusading venture, demonstrating his profound commitment to the cause. Godfrey's commitment to the crusade was not solitary. His brothers, Eustace and Baldwin, also took the cross, further strengthening the familial bond that tied them together. Together, they gathered an impressive force of knights and foot soldiers, ready to march towards Jerusalem. As Godfrey prepared for the crusade, there was no way for him to anticipate the trials that awaited him. The journey to Jerusalem was arduous, spanning across Europe, through hostile territories, and into the heart of the Holy Land. 
It was a path fraught with danger, demanding every ounce of courage, strength, and resilience he possessed. Yet, amid the challenges, Godfrey remained steadfast in his commitment. He saw himself as a soldier of Christ, chosen to wield the sword in the name of his faith. This unwavering faith would be his guiding light throughout the crusading journey. From the moment Godfrey took the cross, he was no longer just the Duke of Lower Lorraine. He had transformed into a crusader, a holy warrior on a divine mission. His decision would set him on a path that would lead him to Jerusalem, forever intertwine his destiny with the fate of the holy city. This part of Godfrey's life illuminates a pivotal moment in his journey as he transitions from being a European noble to a crusader. His deep faith, his desire to serve his religion, and his readiness to sacrifice his comforts for a higher cause all converge in his decision to join the First Crusade. His life from this point forward would be indelibly marked by this profound commitment, shaping his destiny and influencing the course of history. In the spring of 1096, Godfrey of Bouillon embarked on a journey that would mark the most significant chapter of his life. As he, his brothers Eustace and Baldwin, and their army of knights and foot soldiers set out from Lower Lorraine, they were undertaking a venture of unprecedented scale and consequence, the journey to the Holy Land as part of the First Crusade. The route to Jerusalem was daunting, stretching across the length and breadth of Europe through hostile territories, across treacherous seas, and into the heat of the Levant. It was a journey fraught with hardships, trials, and dangers. Yet Godfrey and his men pressed on, motivated by their deep-seated faith and the promise of eternal salvation. The first leg of their journey took them through Central Europe. Along the way, Godfrey displayed his leadership and diplomatic skills, navigating the delicate balance between ensuring the safety of his troops and maintaining peaceful relations with the lands they traversed. His respect for the rights and customs of the territories they passed through earned him admiration and reduced conflict, setting a standard for the other crusader armies to follow. As they travelled through Hungary and Bulgaria, Godfrey and his men faced a variety of challenges. The landscapes were harsh, and the unfamiliar climates posed health risks. Food and water were often scarce, and they were always on guard against potential attacks. But despite these adversities, the Crusader army remained resilient. When they reached the Byzantine capital of Constantinople, Godfrey faced another test of his diplomatic acumen. The Byzantine Emperor Alexius Comnenus was wary of the growing Crusader armies and demanded that they swear an oath of loyalty to him. Godfrey, after careful deliberation, decided to swear the oath, prioritizing the greater goal of reaching Jerusalem over potential territorial gains. The journey across Asia Minor was perhaps the most challenging part of the crusade. The terrain was rugged and arduous with scorching heat and little water. The Seljuk Turks, the Muslim dynasty ruling these lands, were hostile and ready for battle. Yet, despite these odds, Godfrey and his troops prevailed, winning a crucial victory at the Battle of Dori Laem, which boosted the morale of the Crusaders and paved the way for their onward journey. After months of relentless marching, the Crusader armies finally reached Antioch in 1098. The city was a formidable fortress well protected and challenging to overcome. But after a grueling siege of several months, the Crusaders emerged victorious. Godfrey played a key role in the siege, showcasing his tactical brilliance and steadfast determination. Godfrey's journey to the Holy Land was not merely a physical voyage. It was a spiritual expedition, a testament to his unwavering faith and his commitment to his holy mission. Every step he took, every battle he fought, every decision he made was imbued with a sense of divine purpose. This journey shaped Godfrey. It tested his leadership, his courage, and his resilience. It brought him face to face with death, challenged his convictions, and yet fortified his faith. The man who had set out from Lower Lorraine was not the same man who now stood on the brink of the holy city. This transformative journey underscored Godfrey's role as a true crusader. His feats along the way, from the diplomatic successes in Europe to the battlefield victories in Asia Minor and Antioch, established him as a leading figure among the crusaders. 
And as the holy city of Jerusalem loomed in the horizon, Godfrey stood ready for the final and most significant challenge of his crusading mission. The ultimate test of his faith and resolve was yet to come, a test that would forever seal his place in history. In June 1099, after a grueling three-year journey, Godfrey of Bouillon and the other crusaders reached the ultimate destination of their sacred quest. Jerusalem, the holy city with its formidable walls and well-prepared defenders, posed a colossal challenge. Yet the sight of their ultimate objective filled the crusaders with renewed determination. The final and most significant phase of their mission was about to begin. The crusaders were an impressive force, comprising seasoned warriors and ardent believers. But the task that lay ahead was daunting. The city of Jerusalem, a jewel in the crown of the Islamic world, was well fortified. Its walls, built to withstand the most potent of assaults, seemed impregnable. Inside, the defenders, aware of the approaching crusaders, had made extensive preparations. The city's stores were filled to ensure sustainability during a protracted siege, and the defenders stood ready to protect their homes and faith. The heat of the Judean summer, coupled with the scarcity of water and food, made the situation even more challenging for the crusaders. As they camped outside the walls of Jerusalem, they were not just battling an enemy, they were fighting against the elements, against fatigue and against dwindling morale. Godfrey, as one of the leading figures of the crusade, played a critical role in maintaining the unity and resolve of the crusader forces. He was their leader in battle and their source of spiritual inspiration. His actions during the siege demonstrated a unique blend of tactical brilliance, courageous leadership, and unyielding faith. Despite the challenges, the crusaders persisted in their efforts. The siege machinery, Catapults, towers, and battering rams were put into action, pounding against the formidable walls of the city. The crusaders faced stiff resistance from the city's defenders, who fought with courage and determination. But the crusaders were undeterred. Every setback was met with renewed determination, every loss with increased resilience. Godfrey, leading his troops, was a force to be reckoned with. His towering siege tower, famously known as Godfrey's Tower, became a symbol of the Crusaders' resilience. His personal courage as he fought on the front lines inspired his men. His unwavering faith as he prayed for divine assistance strengthened their resolve. The turning point of the siege came on July 15, 1099. After weeks of relentless attacks, the Crusaders managed to breach the walls of Jerusalem. Godfrey was among the first to enter the city, his banner, a symbol of his faith and his mission, flying high. Godfrey's achievement was monumental. He had fulfilled the mission that had brought him across continents, a mission that he believed was divinely ordained. His leadership during the siege, his role in the capture of the city, and his personal courage had earned him the respect and admiration of his fellow crusaders and solidified his status as one of the leading figures of the First Crusade. Yet the capture of Jerusalem was not the end of Godfrey's journey. The holy city, once a distant objective, was now under his feet. But what came next was just as crucial. Jerusalem, sacred to multiple faiths, a city of immense historical and spiritual significance, now looked to the future with uncertainty. Godfrey of Bouillon stood at the precipice of a new era. His actions in the aftermath of the siege would shape not only his destiny, but also the fate of Jerusalem and the legacy of the First Crusade. As Jerusalem fell to the Crusaders, a new chapter in Godfrey's life was about to unfold a chapter that would see him transition from a crusader to a ruler, from a soldier of Christ to a guardian of the holy city. The dust had barely settled on the battlefield when Godfrey of Bouillon found himself facing a new challenge. Jerusalem, the city he and his fellow crusaders had fought so hard to capture, was now theirs. But victory on the battlefield was only the beginning. The holy city needed a leader a ruler who could guide it through the aftermath of the war and establish a new order. The Crusaders, in recognition of his valor and leadership, turned to Godfrey. Yet the mantle of rulership sat uneasily on Godfrey's shoulders. He was a warrior, 
a crusader who had taken the cross to liberate the holy land, not to rule it. His humility and piety were such that he reportedly refused to wear a crown of gold in the city where Christ had worn a crown of thorns. Instead, he accepted the title of Advocate of the Holy Sepulchre, seeing himself as a protector of the city and its sacred sites rather than its king. Godfrey's reign, although brief, was marked by wisdom and judiciousness. As a ruler, he was tasked with establishing a Christian administration in Jerusalem, a city with a diverse population that included not only Christians, but also Jews and Muslims. It was a delicate task, one that required a deft hand and a compassionate heart. Godfrey rose to the challenge. His rule was marked by a balance of firmness and tolerance. He established law and order, ensuring the safety and security of his subject, but he also showed respect for the city's diverse cultural and religious fabric, allowing non-Christians to live and worship in peace, provided they recognized his authority. Under Godfrey's leadership, Jerusalem began its transformation from a war-torn city to a thriving Christian center. He embarked on significant building projects, including the expansion of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and laid the foundations for the institutional structure of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, which would be fully developed by his successors. Even as he took on the responsibilities of rulership, Godfrey remained a warrior at heart. He continued to lead his men in battles, defending Jerusalem and its surroundings from various threats. He proved himself not only a capable administrator, but also a competent military leader reinforcing the boundaries of the nascent state and ensuring its survival. Godfrey's rule came to an abrupt end in July 1100, barely a year after he assumed the leadership of Jerusalem. His death, like his life, was marked by simplicity and humility. He left behind no grand mausoleum, no monument to his name, yet his legacy endured. Godfrey of Bouillon, the Duke of Lower Lorraine, the crusader, the advocate of the Holy Sepulchre, left an indelible mark on the history of Jerusalem and the Crusades. His journey, which had begun in the verdant landscapes of Europe, found its destination in the arid deserts of the Holy Land. His life, steeped in faith and courage, found its purpose in the service of a cause greater than himself. In his death, Godfrey left behind a Jerusalem that was vastly different from the one he had captured. He had laid the foundations of a Christian state in the heart of the Islamic world, a state that would endure for nearly two centuries. He had built a legacy of courage, faith, and leadership that would echo through the annals of history. The tale of Godfrey of Bouillon is not just the story of a man. It's the narrative of a faith, a mission, a crusade. It's the account of a journey fraught with peril and marked by determination, courage, and resilience. It is a saga of a transformation, a transformation of a man, of a city, and of a historical epic. In the annals of the Crusades, few names shine as brightly as that of Godfrey of Bouillon. His feats on the battlefield, his leadership during the siege of Jerusalem, and his rule of the holy city have ensured his place in the pantheon of crusader heroes. Yet, Godfrey's influence extends beyond his life and his deeds. His legacy shaped the course of the crusades, and left an enduring impact on the history of the Holy Land. Godfrey's leadership during the First Crusade set a benchmark for the crusaders who followed him. His determination, courage, and unwavering faith were traits that inspired future generations of crusaders. His tactical brilliance, showcased in the battles of Dorylaeum and Antioch, and the siege of Jerusalem, influenced the military strategies of later crusades. But Godfrey's influence was not confined to the battlefield alone. His rule of Jerusalem provided a blueprint for the governance of the crusader states. His wisdom and tolerance in dealing with a city as diverse and complex as Jerusalem set a precedent that his successors could look to for guidance. His efforts to establish a Christian administration and to transform Jerusalem into a Christian center laid the foundation for the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Kingdom of Jerusalem, founded by Godfrey and consolidated by his successors, became a pivotal Christian power in the Levant during the 12th and 13th centuries. It was the heart of the Crusader states, 
a bulwark of Christendom in the Holy Land. Godfrey's role in its establishment cannot be overstated. His vision and leadership shaped its nascent stages, ensuring its survival and prosperity. Godfrey's legacy also resonated in the realm of culture and legend. He became a symbol of the ideal crusader, a valiant warrior, a pious Christian, and a just ruler. Centuries following his death, he was celebrated in epic poetry, in historical chronicles and popular legend as well. The Chanson de Godefroy de Bouillon, an old French epic poem, immortalized his deeds and valor, weaving a tapestry of chivalry and heroism around his life and crusade. Godfrey's persona also shaped the ideals of knighthood and chivalry in medieval Europe. His life, marked by valor, piety, and humility, exemplified the qualities that a knight was expected to embody. He became a paragon of Christian knighthood, his life and deeds, serving as a guide for those aspiring to the chivalric ideal. Godfrey's impact was also felt in his native land of Lower Lorraine. His achievements brought prestige and honour to his family and his duchy. His life became a source of inspiration and pride for his people, and his memory was cherished in the region's collective consciousness. The influence of Godfrey of Bouillon extends far beyond his lifetime, shaping the course of the Crusades, influencing the history of the Holy Land, and leaving an indelible mark on the cultural and historical landscape of Europe and the Levant. His story transcends the boundaries of time and geography, resonating across the centuries, a testament to his extraordinary life and his enduring legacy. As we reflect on Godfrey's life, we are struck by the incredible journey he undertook, a journey that led him from the verdant landscapes of Europe to the arid deserts of the Holy Land, from the role of a duke to the mantle of a crusader, from the ranks of a soldier to the throne of Jerusalem. It is a journey that exemplifies the human spirit's resilience, faith, and the power of a single individual to shape the course of history. The story of Godfrey of Bouillon is not just a tale of a man. It is the chronicle of an era, a window into a time of great change and upheaval, a time of faith and conflict. It is a testament to the enduring legacy of a man whose life and deeds have shaped the course of history. As we delve deeper into the life and times of Godfrey of Bouillon, we come to understand the profound influence of this remarkable man, his life, his mission, and his enduring legacy. His story serves as a testament to the power of faith, the courage of conviction, and the strength of character that can forever change the course of history. In the centuries since his death, Godfrey of Bouillon has grown larger than life, a towering figure that straddles history and legend. The valiant crusader, the pious Christian, and the wise ruler are facets of the Godfrey that history and legend have presented us, Yet beneath these layers of symbolism and myth lies the true Godfrey, a man shaped by his times, by his faith, and by his convictions. To understand the real Godfrey, we must delve beyond the chronicles and the epic poems, beyond the grandeur of his deeds and the sanctity of his cause. We must journey back to the 11th century, to the heart of feudal Europe, to the crucible of faith and ambition, courage and fear, piety and power that shaped Godfrey's life. Godfrey's humility and sense of duty also set him apart. In an age of rampant ambition and ruthless power struggles, Godfrey chose the path of service. His decision to refuse the title of king, to see himself not as a ruler but as an advocate of the Holy Sepulchre, reflects a deep sense of humility and duty. Unveiling the true Godfrey requires us to reconcile the symbol and the man, the legend and the reality. It demands an understanding of the complex interplay of faith and power, of personal conviction and historical circumstance that defined his life. It calls for an appreciation of the courage, wisdom and humility that made Godfrey the man he was. The journey to understanding Godfrey Bouillon is as fascinating as it is challenging. It requires us to navigate the labyrinth of history and legend, to separate the man from the myth. 
Yet it is a journey worth undertaking, for in the process we do not just uncover the truth about Godfrey. We gain a deeper understanding of the era he lived in, the crusades he fought, and the legacy he left behind. As our exploration of Godfrey of Bouillon draws to a close, we find ourselves standing at the intersection of history and legend, reality and myth. We have traversed the landscape of the 11th and 12th centuries, journeyed with Godfrey from the verdant hills of Europe to the sun-scorched deserts of the Holy Land, from the lordship of Lower Lorraine to the leadership of the First Crusade, from the throes of war to the throne of Jerusalem. Throughout this journey, we have endeavoured to separate the man from the myth to peel back the layers of legend and symbolism that have enshrouded Godfrey over the centuries. We have sought to understand not just the crusader hero, the advocate of the Holy Sepulchre, the Duke of the First Crusade, but the man beneath these titles. Godfrey's legacy, too, extends far beyond his own life and deeds. His leadership during the First Crusade, his rule of Jerusalem, and his enduring influence on the course of the Crusades have left an indelible mark on history. The Kingdom of Jerusalem, the chivalric ideal he embodied, the tales of valour and piety that have woven around his name, all these are testament to Godfrey's lasting impact. The story of Godfrey of Bouillon is more than a chronicle of a man's life. It is a window into an era of profound change and conflict, a reflection of the human spirit's resilience in the face of daunting odds, a testament to the enduring allure of a cause greater than oneself. It is, in essence, the story of the First Crusade itself, a story of faith, courage, and the quest for a holy purpose. In understanding Godfrey, we have journeyed through a pivotal chapter of history, walked the paths of crusaders, and glimpsed the human face of a momentous era. As we leave Godfrey at the gates of history, we carry with us not just the tale of a remarkable man, but a richer understanding of a time when faith moved mountains, when knights sought the Holy Grail of Jerusalem, and when a man named Godfrey etched his name on the sands of time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Saving Castles podcast. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue to explore the fascinating world of castles and chateaus. Don't miss out and subscribe to our podcast to get notified when new episodes are released. For more information about us and our work, visit savingcastles.com. Thank you for listening.